Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge. Of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Most people think of a nurse as a pretty girl in a starched white cap. But did you know there are growing opportunities for men, too, in nursing? Men nursing students receive the same preparation that women students do, often in co-educational schools operated by a university, college, or hospital. The many fields open to men nurses upon graduation include hospital nursing, industry, research, and mental health. Young men between the ages of 18 and 35 should look into the rewards awaiting them as a professional nurse. Or, if you are under 50, consider practical nursing. For further information, write Nursing Careers in care of your postmaster. Or inquire at your nearest school of nursing or hospital. This message is brought to you as a public service. a few men in the Mansion House Cafe when Tony Wayne entered. They all turned to look at the husky, blonde young man, and he stared back at them, a defiant smile on his lips. When they turned to go back to their drinks, he walked up to the bartender. Hello, Joe. Hi, Tony. What'll it be? (laughs) Could you really serve me if I ordered a drink? Well, you're a little young, so I think I'd recommend a nice cold lemonade. That's a good (laughs) idea. Coming right up. Good afternoon, Tony. Hello, Doc. I didn't see you. How's everything at the mine? Wonderful. Everything's wonderful. Rainbow's getting to be one of the biggest producers in the Yukon. It'll keep on growing, too. Or, or maybe you haven't heard about the injunction Uncle Bennett has slapped on the small miners up on the bench land. Yes, I've heard of it. Let me explain what it means. They can't take an ounce of gold out of their land till the boundary dispute is settled. That means they'll either starve or sell out to us at our price. Naturally, they'll sell, and the rainbow will be bigger than ever. My Uncle Bennett is a smart man. Dad wouldn't have pulled a trick like this, would he? No, he wouldn't allow it, if he were alive. And there's nothing I can do. Doc, you were with Dad when he died, weren't you? Yes, they brought him to my office. Shot in the back. But before he died, he, he was able to tell you something. Not really, a few words. Fine lied, she said. As far as I could make out, those were the words. I may have been mistaken. When the police questioned me, I couldn't think of any lies your father knew, or could anyone else? And I'm sure you weren't mistaken. Tony, I realize it was a shock for you to come home from school and find your father had been murdered. Oh, let's not talk about it. And to be told his killers had escaped, but it was three months ago. Is three months too long to remember? I didn't mean that. We haven't forgotten, and the Northwest Mounted hasn't forgotten. You should put your trust in their ability... And try to get hold of myself, I know. That's just that I don't like people to hate me. They don't hate you. They do, and why shouldn't they? I'm a Wayne. There are some benchland miners down the end of the bar. I'll show you they hate it. Uh, Here's your lemonade, Tony. Hello. I saw Janie and Mary go into the store across the street. Go and get her. She can handle it. What's she up to? Go and get Janie. Right. What? 
Why don't you want to talk to me, Dad? I've said hello, Tony. Here's your lemonade, Tony. Just set it down. You used to be able to spare me more than a few words, Dad. I remember when I was only ten. I used to ride up to your shack and you'd tell me long stories about the gold rush in California. What's happened? What's changed you? Does it have anything to do with the fact that we're trying to steal your land? I don't want to discuss it, Tony. I don't want to lose my temper. Go ahead. Why shouldn't you? Go ahead and tell me what you think of the Wayne. You don't have to worry. My gun will stay in its holster. I'm not worried about any sprout like you. I'm a Wayne, Thad. Leave him alone, Tony. Thad has no quarrel with you. Well, I have. Janie, what are you doing in here? This is no place for a lady. It'll be a few years before I'm a lady, and it'll be longer than that before you're a man. <laughs> now, come along and help me load my supplies into the bucket. Well, there's something I want to get settled, Janie. I'll settle you. Now, come along. Hey, let go of my hey. hair. <laughs> hey. <laughs> After Janie's supplies were loaded, she made Tony tie his mount to the back of the buckboard and drive. Janie's father was one of the benchland miners, and she and Tony had grown up together until he had been sent away to school. And now, though she was a few months the younger of the two, she laid down the law. It's as simple as A, B, C. Your uncle manages the mine, and he's the one who's doing it. Well, you don't have anything to do with it. Mom owns the controlling interest. But she lets your uncle run the mine as he sees fit. Well, she shouldn't let him steal your land. Well, of course, I, I have to agree with you there. But at the same time, there's no one in the valley who doesn't understand how you feel about it. Now, will you kindly get it through your thick head that we don't blame you? You're sure you don't hate me, Jane? Oh, as if I could. Now, will you promise to show some sense from now on? A well, lawsuit isn't the only trouble. You mean your dad? Well, it's something I found out. I'm going away for a little while, Jane. Where? I don't know exactly. You must have some idea. I can't tell you about it. But I'll be coming back, and when I do... Maybe everything will be all right. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, picture yourself at the ball game right now. The bases are loaded with two outs. The star hitter steps up, and you see him in person. You get the thrill of seeing him hit that homer. <laughs> Get in on the fun. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yes, you can go free if you are 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker puffed wheat, Quaker puffed rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The tickets tell you the names of the teams and the dates. Bring the whole family and have the time of your lives at the ballpark. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat or Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. The house where Tony lived with his mother was set back in a grove of trees away from the riverbank about a mile upstream from the Rainbow Mine. Tony's uncle, Bennett Wayne, lived in a cabin next to the mine office. When Tony reached home after leaving Janie, it was getting dark. He went directly to his bedroom where he packed a few clothes in his saddlebags and from there to the kitchen where he filled the saddlebags with food. He had just opened the back door when Mrs. Wayne entered the kitchen. Tony, where are you going? What are you doing with those saddlebags? I'm going away for a few days. Where? In just away. Why can't you wait until morning before you start out? I can't, that's all. This, this trip, it's because of the injunction, isn't it? No, it has nothing to do with that. Tony, I'm only doing what I think is right for you. I don't know anything about mining. I must let your uncle run the mine the way he thinks best. And he says we must go to law in order to protect our boundaries. Well, that isn't true. He wants to force the small miners to sell out to him. I'm sure he wouldn't take advantage of them. You think much better of my uncle than I do. Mom, are you going to marry him? And believe me, Tony, anything I do will be for your sake. Only for you. Please, Mom, don't marry Uncle Bennett for my sake. Goodbye. 
If I'm away for more than three days, I'll write. Tony. Goodbye. Shortly after the boy left, the storm broke. High in the mountains, Sergeant Preston and Constable Downey took shelter in a great rocky cavern where there was room for themselves, King, and the horses. They were returning from a three-month patrol to the north. They'd covered many miles that day. So as soon as they had eaten, the men rolled up in their blankets. King settled down to the entrance of the cave. He slept lightly, waking now and then as the thunder crashed and the lightning played on the trail which ran along the edge of a deep gorge. Suddenly, he leaped to his feet and growled. The sergeant woke. What is it, King? Anything wrong, Sergeant? King, here's something. Listen. Someone riding this way. Riding too fast. He can't see where the trail's washed out near Eagle Point. If he doesn't keep close to the cliff wall, he'll fall down into the gorge. There he is. Hold up there! He didn't hear you, Sergeant. We'll stop him. Here, buddy. The sergeant and the constable slipped bridles on their horses and without waiting to saddle, mounted and rode down the rocky slope to the trail. Easy, fellow. Easy, Easy, buddy. Then they took out after the rider. Come on, buddy. Get they rode hard, and as they rounded a bend, they caught a glimpse of the rider as the lightning flashed. The sergeant called to him once more. Stop! The trail's washed out! The storm swallowed up his words, but the rider, Tony Wayne, saw the two men following him. Instead of stopping, he spurred his horse on. We'll have to stop him before he rounds the next bend. Come on, Blackie! Yeah, the sure-footed Blackie responded well to the sergeant's urging, cutting down the gap that separated him from the horse ahead with every stride. But now they were nearing the bend. Faster, Blackie! Tony's horse stumbled, and as he was recovering, Blackie ranged alongside. The sergeant reached out and grasped the bridle of Tony's mouth. Oh, no, oh, 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 Blackie, oh. All right, mister. You got me back. But I warn you, I'm not carrying much money. We're not hold up, men. Oh, oh, oh. I'm Sergeant oh. Preston, Northwest Mounted Police, and this is Constable Downey. You're not wearing red coats. We didn't stop to put on our coats, son. We were in too much of a hurry to stop you. Police officers? Well, why'd you want to stop me? I haven't done anything. Just ride slowly around the bend. Well, all right. Get up, Buggy. Get up, Come on, get up. Oh, Buggy. Oh, oh, oh. Now look. Golly. Trail's almost gone. It's passable, but you wouldn't have made it at the speed you were going. Sorry, this is Jim Wayne's boy. That's so? Does your father approve of your riding across the mountains in a storm like this? My father approve? My father's dead. What? He was murdered three months ago. Murdered? Well, that's terrible news. How did it happen? Well, how does it happen that you're police officers and that you don't know about it? Constable Downey and I have been all the way up to Herschel Island. Must have happened shortly after we left Dawson. Three months ago. The killers are still at large. Who were they? Well, that's a mystery the police haven't been able to solve. Now I'm going to do something about it myself. I see. What's your name? It's Tony. Well, Tony, unless there's some urgent reason for you riding through this storm, I wish you'd turn back to our camp. We're in a cave. It's dry and there's plenty of room. Spend the night with us and then start out again in the morning. Well, that might be a good idea. Of course. I'd like to hear more about your father's death. Let's go. Get up, like Get up. In the cave, Tony told the sergeant all that was known of his father's death. When he had finished, and so the killing remains a mystery. You said you were going to do something about solving it, Tony. I am. What can you do that the force can't? Well, Dad said just two words before he died. Find Lige. I'm going to follow his instructions. Lige? Lige who? I'll keep that to myself. You mean you know the man your father was referring to and you kept the information from the force? If I told the police, other people would find out that I knew and... There are people I don't trust in Rainbow Valley. If you told the constable and me, no one would find out. And I'm sure we could do more than you if it's a question of locating a man. What's his name, Tony? Well, it's... It's Hawk... Sergeant. Lige Hawkins. You know him? You know where he is? Give us all the information you have, Tony. Well, I, I found a letter from this Lige Hawkins in Dad's papers. Uh, Hawkins was asking for a grub staking. He said that he'd be in town on the day Dad was killed. Dad was shot on his way from town out to the mine. It, it, it could have been that Lige was riding with him. It could have been that Lige committed the murder. I don't believe that. Why not? Well, because I think someone else did it. And the letter I found made it clear that Lige and Dad were old friends. Lige wouldn't have had to shoot him to get money from him. Well, Tony, you'd better go home and don't do anything or say anything until you hear from us. Give me your promise. Well, yes, Sergeant. Yes, I'll promise. The rain was still falling the next morning as the sergeant and the constable rode back across the mountains and Tony returned home. 
The storm continued without a let-up all that day. And the thunder still rolled across the valley as Bennett Wayne paced the floor of his cabin that night. There was a knock on the door. Yes, come in. Yes, Matt. Oh, come in. You too, Jake. What's on your mind, boss? The job isn't finished. Eh, what job? The one we don't talk about. My nephew is doing a lot of wild guessing and coming too close to the truth. Nobody listens to him. Someone may, sooner or later. The boy is dangerous. You want us to... Yes. We must get rid of him, but uh, it will seem to be an accident. When, boss? It will take a little arranging. Tomorrow night, I think. Yes. It can be managed tomorrow night. The rain stopped before morning, but hundreds of swollen mountain streams were pouring into Rainbow Gorge. And that night, as the sergeant, the constable, and a grizzled old prospector drew rain in front of Mrs. Wayne's home, the river was close to flood level and still rising. Hold on, here. Oh, oh, oh. Wait here, Aunt Al Tony. We're back. Steady. Oh, oh. Stay here, King. A policeman? Sergeant Preston, Mrs. Wayne. I'd like to see Tony for a minute. Oh, what about... He hasn't done anything, has he? Not that I know of. Of course not. It's just that he's been acting so strangely. I've been so worried, and then tonight that Indian coming here, and then the way Tony rode off afterwards. Where's he gone? Well, he said he was going to see Janie Merrick, and he rode in that direction. What about an Indian coming here? He had a message for Tony, Sergeant. Tony wouldn't tell me what it was. Where does this Janie Merrick live? Almost directly west of here, up on the bench land. She and her father live in a big log cabin near Traveler's Spring. Oh, yes, I know where it is. I'll drop in there for a moment and have a word with Tony. Good night, Mrs. Wayne. Good night, Sergeant. Tony isn't there. I'm afraid he's up to something, Constable. Steady. We're heading for the Merrick claim up on the bench. Get up, Come on, get up. Oh, 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 oh. Janie Merrick was standing in the open doorway of her cabin when the men rode up. Oh, look at oh, 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 oh. Miss Merrick? Yes, are you, Sergeant Preston? That's right. Tony here? Well, he has been. Is, is this... Have you brought Lige back with you? This is Lige, but where's Tony? It must have been a trick. What must have been? That message. An Indian brought it to Tony earlier this evening. He said that if Tony wanted to find out who killed his father, to be up at Eagle Point at 10 this evening. The point where Rainbow Gorge makes a big turn. I know. Do you have anything that belongs to him? Belongs to him? I don't understand. Any sort of wearing apparel? Wait, yes, he left a sweater here the other day. That'll be fine. Get it, please? Yes, of course. It's nearly ten now. Tony may not be at the point when we get there, but King will be able to find him. Here's the sweater. Oh, thanks. This is a job for you, King. <laughs> That's right, boy. Get the scent. I'll find him. Follow him, King. <laughs> oh, follow him. Oh, At exactly 10 o'clock, Tony rode up to Eagle Point. Oh, oh, Jake, fast. But when he recognized the two men waiting there, he tried to turn his mount and get away. But one of the men oh. grabbed the bridle. Oh, no, you don't. The second man pulled him from his yeah. saddle and hit him behind the ear with the barrel of his gun. Yeah. Oh. The boy went limp. Oh, what do we do with him? Hey, just throw him in the river. Right, here he goes. Now. Oh. The shock of the icy water brought Tony back to consciousness. He swallowed a great deal of water, but he managed to fight his way to the surface. Desperately, he swam toward the steep bank. His strength was almost gone when he reached it. Still, he managed to pull himself up the bank a few feet before he collapsed. He lay there, helpless, his head buried in his arms. He felt nothing when the rising river flowed over his feet, his ankles, up to his knees. He groaned, and a wave of darkness seemed to sweep over him. continue our adventure in just a moment. Here's to wind up the pitch. The bases are loaded and it's a two-bagger and the game's tied up. Say, kids, come out to the ballpark as guest of a major or minor league team. Right now, you can see baseball games free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring a paying adult like mom or dad and you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. 
free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. In Quaker Paco 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals Mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell Mom you want to eat lots of Quaker Puff wheat or Puff rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. to continue. When Sergeant Preston met Bat and Jake riding down the gorge trail toward him, he wasted little time on them. Where are you men coming from? Uh, near the start of the ridge. Sergeant, these two men were with Bennett Wayne the night he shot Jim. What have you done with Tony Wayne? Done with him? I don't know what you're talking about. Have you killed him? Uh, we haven't even seen him. Constable Downey... Take charge of them. Handcuff them. Take them into town. Put them in jail. Right, sir. You can lend him a hand, Lange. Sure thing. But, but Tony... He oh, wants oh, to oh. go on. Better alive, Tony's somewhere up ahead. Go on, King. Come on, Blakey. King followed Tony's set up the trail toward Eagle Point. But it was a sergeant, riding close to the edge of the gorge, who first saw the boy lying at the water's edge at the bottom of the steep bank. He was trying to crawl higher on the bank, and he called feebly for help. Oh, look at him. There he is, King. Go get him. King reached the boy in time, just as the floodwaters were about to close over him. The great dog started dragging him to higher ground. And then a moment later, the sergeant, slipping and sliding down the slope, reached his side. It's all right, King. I have him, boy. Let's go. An hour later, Tony was wrapped in blankets and lying on the sofa in his mother's living room. Mrs. Wayne and Janie Merrick watched as the sergeant took his pulse. It's much stronger. I'm sure he'll be all right now, but I'll send a doctor as soon as I get to town. You'll be stopping at the mine on the way. Yes, Mrs. Wayne. Lige is positive it was your father-in-law who shot your husband. I'm going to arrest him. And tonight he sent those two men up to Eagle Point to kill Tony. We'll find out exactly what happened up there when the boy comes, too. I'll be on my way now. Thank you for everything, Sergeant. And thank you, King. It was you who found Tony, was it? Another few minutes would have been too late. See you later. After the sergeant had gone, the woman and the girl sat beside Tony as he slept. Ten minutes passed, and there was a knock on the door. I wonder who that can be. Well, I left a note for Dad saying I'd be here. He may have come for me. Where will you go and see Jane? Yes, of course. Well, what's the matter, Jeannie? Well, I expected to see my father. Why are you here? Something wrong? Yes, there's been an accident. Tony fell from his horse and hurt himself. That's too bad. Why do you look at me that way? I, I don't know. I, I'm just upset. At seeing me instead of your father? One would think I had horns in my head and was breathing fire from my mouth. I, I'm sorry. You're a poor lad. <laughs> Why are you drawing your gun? Because I've been hiding in the grove for the past half hour. I was there when the sergeant brought the boy home. Now that he's gone, I intend to take a look at him. No! I don't dare to shut the door of my face. I'm coming in. Now walk before me into the living room. Who was it, Janie? Bennett. Yes. Why am I such an unwelcome visitor, Anne? You don't have to be told. You killed my husband and you tried to kill my boy. Mrs. Wayne. Mom. What? How did I get here? Sergeant Preston brought you to me. He found you after Jake and Bat tried to murder you. You were right about your uncle, and I was wrong. In the future, I... Future? There won't be any future for any of you. You're all finished, Bennett. Wrong. You are. I'm getting out of here. And to do that, I must be sure you three are kept quiet. And the best way to do that is to... Use his gun. You dirty kill. Yes, and I'll start with you. No, I won't let you shoot him. Stay there, and one shot will do for both of you. You've been too smart for your own good. (laughs) Bennett Wayne leveled his gun. The front door burst open, and the sergeant fired before Bennett could squeeze the trigger of his pistol. The sergeant's bullet caught him in the right arm, and the pistol clattered to the floor. Get the gun, King. Good dog. I'll take it, boys. Sergeant, we thought you'd gone. I started out, but King wouldn't let me get past the grove. 
I decided to find out what was troubling him, and he led me straight back here to the house. Mr. Wayne was hiding in the grove. Yes, we saw him enter the house. He was going to shoot all of us. To keep us quiet so he could escape. Tony, who hit you over the head and threw you into the river? Or Jake and Beth. No doubt acting under orders. They'll hang with your uncle. And Mom, we'll drop the lawsuit now, won't we? We won't try to steal a bench manager's claim. You may depend on it, son. Oh, that's wonderful, Mrs. Wayne. You fools. And you, I suppose, are the wise man. Bennett Wayne, I arrest you in the name of the Crown for the murder of your brother. Tonight you've proved your own guilt, and this case is closed. Oh, oh, oh. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The warm weather and long daylight hours mean more fun out of doors, especially for the younger members of the family. But sometimes it's not possible to be outside, or it's important to relax and sit quietly for a little while. Then is the time to tune to Mutual. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, there are programs of imaginative entertainment that bring all of the adventure and excitement of the wide open spaces. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, member of the famed Northwest Mounted Police, braves the dangers of a wild and lawless territory in the days when gold was king. With his faithful dog, Yukon King, Sergeant Preston is a challenging example of courage and daring. And following Sergeant Preston every day, Monday through Friday, is Bobby Benson. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, the doors open wide on a whole world of adventure with Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and Bobby Benson, both on mutual over most of these stations. In our next adventure, Sergeant Preston has just been summoned to the office of Inspector Conrad. Sergeant, three men have robbed the bank in Selkirk. I want you to go down there and try to bring them in. Any idea who the men are, sir? Yes. From the description given by the bank cashier, it's fairly certain that two of them were Luke Durbin and Jeb Hayward. They were both wanted for a long list of crimes. What about the third man? The third one was a boy, Sergeant, about 16 or 17 years old. We don't know who he is or where he came from. But if he's working with Durbin and Hayward, he's likely to be dangerous. All right, sir. Let's go, (laughs) King. Luke Durbin and Jeb Hayward are cool, desperate killers. And the boy traveling with them may be equally dangerous. Sergeant Preston is sure to face plenty of peril when he goes after this strange and deadly trio of outlaws. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good hell from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all Americans.